What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back here again with another video. So, I just finished watching NXT TakeOver 30 and SummerSlam. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm just watching NXT today or whenever this video uploads. I didn't watch it Saturday because I was out and about with my friends having a good time for my birthday celebration. So, I made it a mission that on Sunday I was going to watch uh takeover while SummerSlam was live so that way i can watch takeover and then kind of check out SummerSlam and fast forward through the parts that i didn't really too much care for and um that's what i did it, it made the experience a, a lot more easier to take you know and i did the same thing with nxc i kind of fast forward through the parts i didn't really care for i just wanted to see the matches that i was interested in so we're going to start with nxc first and then we're going to work our way down to my favorite matches um throughout nxt and then we're gonna get to SummerSlam, and we're gonna we got some things to talk about that so let's get into it first and foremost nxt take over 30 overall i enjoyed it it was definitely enjoyable um it's for me it's just it's always weird still even though there are people in the crowds in nxt it's it's just not the same atmosphere you get from a takeover when the crowd's actually there i will say that the ladder match that ladder match very enjoyable had some pretty good spots is it my favorite ladder match from nxt no i i want i'm not sure what nxt takeover it was but the ladder match i believe it was for the the tag team championships i just remember uh the authors of pain they were involved in that match that's one of my favorite ladder matches from nxt in general one of my favorite ladder matches that that was a, a hell of a ladder match comment down below if y'all remember what nxt takeover special that was where they had that epic tag team ladder match it was fantastic but this one was more or less enjoyable i think given damian priest the dub here makes sense you want to you know he's he's been a guy that's you know he's had some decent feuds with people and he hadn't really come out the top of majority of the feuds i could be wrong i haven't been watching it on the regular but like the feud he had with finn balor he didn't really win that you know what i'm saying like uh, he's like Someone that talks a good game but doesn't really win the matches he should win. You feel me? So I feel like this was something he needed. And, it, you know, hopefully he can continue, you know, riding that wave. And they book him in a sense of, okay, he won the championship. Let's book him a little bit stronger. Give him some good wins under his belt. So I enjoyed it overall. Very entertaining. Some crazy-ass spots. That spot with johnny gargano and i forgot the other wrestler's name and this is kind of off the cuff so i'm not even gonna try to go and edit it y'all know who i'm talking about it was the you know anytime they have a ladder perched up on the ropes and then it's laying flat horizontally against another ladder like you know something's gonna happen johnny gargano grabbed him uh, I want to say he tried to powerbomb him. Not sure. Once again, I'm sure you guys will correct me, but he didn't get out of the ladder. Like he, like half of the dude's back hit the ladder. Johnny fell. Bro, his shit looked brutal, dog. I'm like, yo, this was them ladder matches, man. Much respect to, to wrestlers that are willing to go through that. So carrying cross one. I think that was the right decision. Hopefully, they uh, continue to keep booking him uh, in uh, in a strong sense because he definitely needs to expound on upon that win. Uh, we're going to get into Adam Cole, Pat McAfee. I'm not going to lie to you. I was very surprised at how well Pat McAfee was moving in the ring. Like, dude looked pretty, pretty good. I'm like, not going to lie to you. He held his own. It wasn't like a squash like you would think it would be. No, he he did his thing. And I was like, okay, this is this was entertaining. I enjoyed it. Of course, Adam Cole was gonna win that match because you don't have Adam Cole lose like that. You can't. He's been one of your top guys in NXT. You don't have him lose like that. But it was entertaining. Pat McAfee looked pretty good. My man literally jumped from the ring to the top rope. And gave a superplex, I want to say. Bruh, athletic as hell. Did not realize that. 
He literally in one motion just jumped up to the top rope, gave him a superplex. I was like, with ease. Like he had been doing it for years. I'm like, yo, this was not, this was not bad. It was enjoyable. I enjoyed the match. The right person won. Feuds over, but it lit the things that led up to this match was quite entertaining. So uh, I'm looking forward to WWE incorporating feuds like that where it blurs the line of reality. You know what I'm saying? What's real and what's fake. Those feuds be uh, pretty entertaining, especially when it comes to the actual match for the most part. So I enjoyed that. Last match that I really enjoyed from NXT uh, TakeOver 30, of course, Karrion Cross versus Keith Lee. The promo package for this match. Mm, fantastic, bro. It's one thing I've always liked about WWE is they take care of of their wrestlers in the sense of making sure they look good before the match starts. Like they sell those promo packages and that promo package was intense. It told a story. I was hyped for the match and it delivered, bro. It delivered. Keith Lee looked very strong. Now throughout the match, I knew that Keith Lee wasn't winning only because they have built up Karrion Cross as this unstoppable, monstrous individual that has no problem trying to murder you in the ring. When he beat Tommaso Ciampa, I'm pretty sure I said that wrong. Tommaso Ciampa, I think I said it right. Either way, when he beat Tommaso Ciampa in the way that he beat him after Tommaso was riding this high of coming back from injury, bruh, I don't think people understand. Tommaso Ciampa obviously was... The most over guy in NXT. He destroyed him. Destroyed him. Like he was. Not like he was nothing. But he made his his impact be known. Once that happened. It was like. Okay. They're really giving the rocket booster pack. To Karrion Cross, And he's going to the top. You don't have him beat someone like that. You don't have him beat down Dajakovic. In the way that he does. You don't have him do things like that. To. Top guys in your company. Unless. You plan on booking him. To the moon. Simple as that. And that's exactly what they did. And throughout this match. You can tell Keith Lee just. You know what I'm saying. The story they was telling. Is this guy. Is. He's going to make it. His mission to show. Uh, Karrion Cross. I'm not like everybody else. And they put on a fantastic match. I enjoyed it for what it was. But ultimately, when it's all said and done, Karrion Cross was the the right person in my mind to win the match. Now, reportedly, uh, I believe this was reported today as when I'm recording it. And this is uh, on a Sunday night. But reportedly, Karrion Cross suffered an injury, like a separated shoulder. I'm not sure. Comment down below if you guys have any updates on that. So I'm not, I don't think it's in a situation where he may have to relinquish the title, but he did suffer injury. We're not, I'm not sure exactly how extensive it is, but comment down below. Let me know if y'all have any updates on his injury. Uh, it would kind of suck if he has to relinquish the title before he even had a title reign. But if he doesn't have to relinquish it and he's able to, you know, heal from it fairly quickly and, you know what I'm saying, defend his title. He's going to be a hard person to beat. I'm In my mind, I'm thinking the one person that could possibly beat him and the one person I would want to beat him, not going to lie to you, I would want Tommaso Ciampa to get his run back and I would want him to beat him. I, the only reason why I say that because you can have him go through people, but you have to have a face to face him. <laughs> no, that sounds so... I definitely didn't mean to say it like that. But you have to have someone that the fans want to see get their championship because to be honest Tommaso Ciampa never really got the belt back that he never technically lost so you would want him to you know what I'm saying get his run back get his win come back victorious after Karrion Cross has been laying waste to everybody so I don't know comment down below let me know who do you think uh Karrion Cross should feud with next and um do you think Tommaso Ciampa should get uh, get his run back and potentially try to go for the NXT title again? But 
that was it for me personally. So those were the matches that uh, I was really interested in seeing in, and I enjoyed it. And like I said, before I got into the review, NXT TakeOver 30 probably would have been, of course, better with a crowd, uh, a bigger crowd. But it was enjoyable, and I enjoyed it for what it was. I was definitely entertained. So let's get to the to the big one. SummerSlam this year, man, not going to lie. Exceeded my expectations. I was not expecting to like it as much as I did, but I did. And I want to get to the nitty gritty. There was matches on here that I skipped because remember, I ended up watching this right after uh, I was watching NXT TakeOver 30. So it, the show had already been going for about a couple hours. So I had the luxury of skipping through the matches I did not give two Fs about. And boy, there were some matches. Did not care. Didn't even know when they was on the card. Who cares? So, <clears throat> the matches that I was thoroughly interested in, and I, I, I will say this, I didn't watch the Bailey versus Oscar match um, or the Sasha versus Oscar match. I kind of skimmed through, but I, I like the results. I like the ending. I'm more concerned on how they're going to build this Sasha versus Bailey feud and the seeds have been planted. That I'm definitely interested in. Of course, I think Asuka definitely, you know, she deserves to be the Raw Women's Champion. But I think the takeaway from this whole thing is Sasha and Bayley are going to be feuding. And I think that's going to be entertaining as hell. So that's the most I really cared about this whole storyline with the women is just seeing Sasha and Bayley go at it. So um, let's talk about Seth and Dominic Mysterio. I got a little bit of goosebumps seeing Dominic out there with his father, bro. If you guys watch wrestling or watched wrestling as long as I have, you know that you know. Remember, you remember seeing Dominic as a little a little kid, you know, watching his father wrestle, and now for him to come out there at SummerSlam by his father's side wrestling in his very first match, main event. Well, it's not main event, but like it's a major pay per view match like this. It was it was it was heartwarming, man. It was it was dope to see. Um, yes, you can tell he's still trying to get accustomed to the ring, like like I guess not accustomed to the ring, but you can tell he's he's still trying to get his feet wet when it comes to wrestling. But I think he I think he'll be fine, man. He he definitely he definitely did the best he could, you know. what I'm saying just with his experience level, especially with Seth Rollins. Um, what I don't understand. If it's if this is like an anything goes type of match, like it's like basically like a street fight, why are they starting off with wrestling? I know for a fact if a dude was trying to gouge, like literally permanently blind my father has been harassing my family for months. I'm not going to go in a match on some let's wrestle first when I know he can out wrestle me. Especially if he gives me the stipulation that it can be whatever I can do, use whatever weapon I want. I am going to make it my mission to come out there, kendo sticks, toolboxes, a car if I have to. I'm coming out there with all types of weapons of mass destruction and I'm going to use them on you to eviscerate you. But that's just me and my logical thinking, how I think of things. But. I want to say the Kendo shocks, whew, very brutal. They've been brutal the weeks leading up. You can see Seth Rollins welted up. You can see Dominic getting welted up. It was very emotional. I think this match worked because of the emotions behind it. Uh, Seth Rollins is fantastic as a heel. Dominic's mother was backstage. And she came out to the to ramp area once Seth Rollins introduced the handcuffs. And they started teasing it like as if Seth was going to go up there and attack his uh, attack Ray Mysterio's wife. And, uh, you know, Ray's tied up at this point. He couldn't get out, I believe. If I remember correctly, he's tied up in the, on the handcuffs. Couldn't get out. Dominic's laid out somewhere or whatnot. And... They're basically insinuating like they're going to put their hands or hurt, you know, uh, Dominic's mother. And that's when Dominic goes insane. That moment was pretty dope. He attacks them. And I, I want to say that they really played on the emotions in this match. 
because at this point, Ray's Ray's handcuffed. Um, I want to say Seth Rollins gets the upper hand here. He has him in the position where he's going to hit him with the stomp. He's just talking mad trash. Save your son, Ray. Save Just great heel stuff. Hits him with the stomp. One, two, three, and it's over, bro. And Ray's handcuffed. There's nothing he can do. Over. Boom. Finished. And in my head, I was like, damn, I really think they should have gave Dominic the win here because you gave him out because he could use weapons and you kind of can end the feud. But this feud doesn't end. I don't think it... It doesn't make sense for it to end like that. Because basically, Seth Rollins just destroyed the Ray Mysterio family. That's it. Just single-handedly destroyed them. And as I know, I'm pretty sure there's going to probably be at some point another match. If not, I don't know what to do. I don't know where you take this. I don't, I'm not sure. That's why I thought they were going to end the feud at SummerSlam. They may take this to another level. I'm not sure. So comment down below if you think if you guys agree with the decision of Seth Rollins winning. Do you think Dominic should have won? And do where do you see them taking a the feud at this point? Because Ray lost, Dominic lost. Now what? What what happens now? You know what I'm saying? The the Ray Mysterio family has been pretty much embarrassed. By Seth Rollins. So I don't know where you take the feed from there. But comment down below. I would like to get your guys opinion. Alright. Let's get into the match I was really excited about. Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre. Promo package. Once again. Was fantastic bro. This was one of the best promo packages. Out of both shows. Oh that sh promo package was so good. So 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 good. Showing Randy Orton just. Punting people to the another dimension bro like just giving boys the meanest swift kicks man all the legends it was fantastic i loved it match was entertaining it was strictly a wrestling match wasn't too much shenanigans going on it had its methodical paces at points i like the figure four leg lock i like that I like that whole sequence because you can see Randy just writhing in pain. And I'm not sure who made the comment on commentary, but someone said, how poetic would it be if he tapped out to the figure four? And Drew's selling it like he's just wrenching back like on his leg. It, it was fantastic. There was some blood, a little bit of color. It looked like some like stiff stiff hard shot blood uh it wasn't too like gratuitous but it made sense like it's believable these guys are literally trying to beat the hell out of each other and i like the fact that the match didn't end on like a rko or a punt or a claymore kick the match ended on a backslide Something that Randy Orton didn't see coming. I know that's the line that they've been. I don't know why they've been doing this for pay-per-views. You'll never see it coming. Like adding taglines. I'm not a big fan of that. It doesn't come off organic. But in this instance, it worked. Because I didn't see it coming. Randy didn't see it coming storyline-wise. And Randy's just out the ring like shocked. But in this look of, okay. All right, I know what I'm going to have to do. It was this look of, all right, you got me. Smart. Smart. And you can see Drew talking his trash like, yo, bro, got the job done. You're not, you're not taking this from me. You know what I'm saying? And you can just see Randy smirking. And I'm, I'm glad this feud is going to continue. I'm actually so happy they gave Drew the win. I said this while I was watching the match. Drew needed this win. Reason why he needed this win, because his title reign so far has been lackluster. Not because of Drew. It's not Drew's fault. It's the fault of WWE booking. And then of course this whole COVID thing kind of really killed killed the like the momentum of his title reign. Because there's no it's not crowds. There's no crowds really. So he deserves the cheers, the pops, all the adu adulation, but he can't get it because of the situation we're in. So on top of bad WWE booking. And when I mean my bad booking. Like he's facing people that you don't care about. Seth Rollins was cool and understandable. The feud with him right after Brock. But I didn't really care about the food. Uh, food the feud with uh, Bobby Lashley. Uh, it was a decent match. But I didn't care for it. And I definitely. Definitely. A thousand million percent. 
did not care about the feud he had with Dolph. Didn't. So this was a feud he needed to have with a legitimately good heel in Randy Orton. And I'm I'm glad they gave him the dub. At least he can say he beat someone legitimately uh like a threat to his championship outside of Seth and outside of Brock. Now I know they're gonna have another match. They're booking it like they're gonna have another match because you don't end off a a, a a a nice little rivalry like that with just a backslide. So they're gonna have another match, and I can see Randy Orton calling that. I was like, "Yo, do you feel good about that win?" So I'm looking forward to that. I'm pretty sure at the next pay per view, I'm willing to guess Drew will lose the belt, and Randy will be the the top heel. Well, the top heel with the championship. So, but comment down below. What do you guys think? Do you think that Drew should, uh, you know, win the next match with Randy Orton? Because let's be honest here, guys. There's no one else really viable to face Drew for the title other than Randy. And I, you kind of the way they're setting it up, you can kind of tell they're gonna have he's gonna get a rematch at some point by some means. So, do you guys think? Drew should win the next match if they do have one against each other. Or do you guys think that Randy Orton should have the championship in their next go around? So comment down below. All right. Now, let's get to the part that we all want to talk about. Last match that uh, I actually was enjoying for a little bit. Um, Braun Strowman versus The Fiend Bray Wyatt. In my head, I already knew Braun was losing this match. I'm sorry. He's losing this match. The Fiend was going to get his his win, and he was going to get the Universal Championship. Was it entertaining? Yes, it was. I love the fact that The Fiend is literally no-selling every single thing damn near. Getting back up like he never got hit, bro. It. I don't know why that was entertaining to me. And Braun's like, yo, what do I got to do to end you? You know what I'm saying? He pulled out his inner Tommaso Ciampa tore up tore up the ring to expose the wood canvas below and ended up getting sister abigail on it twice boom bada bing bam 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 match is over and uh braun Strowman lost and the fiend is your new universal champion which he shouldn't have never lost in the first place but that's neither here nor there what i really was shocked by out of nowhere Roman motherfucking reigns, spears this man into another dimension. He got the beard going. He got some gray hairs. He returns. He's talking mad trash. I'm like, whoa, okay. All right. This, this, I didn't see that coming, WWE. Good job. Then he gets out the ring, spears Braun Strowman into oblivion. And then starts talking mad trash saying, I made you. Without me, there isn't you. And to be honest, it's facts. Now, you got to put an asterisk there. The only reason why Braun Strowman ever got over in the first place because people hated Roman Reigns so much that when Braun Strowman was beating the living crap out of Roman Reigns, he got over. He became a face. I know y'all remember the I'm not finished with you yet segment and was continuously destroying Roman Reigns. And then matches they had were pretty entertaining. It's just it was just dumb chaos and it was fun to watch. That's how Braun got over. So in a sense, yeah. He got over because people hated you so much. Your character at least. So he was talking mad trash, got a steel chair, started beating the crap. Out of Braun Strowman. Just talking mad trash. Gets back in the ring. Hits uh, the Fiend with another spear. This is after he already beat down the Fiend. And he was talking trash to him. Like yo. You don't. You don't deserve this title bro. You don't deserve this title. No. You don't. You can't carry this title. This is my title. I deserve this title. Basically saying that. And in my mind I'm like bro. If this would have happened in front of a crowd, he would have got so much booze. 
but the way he's talking trash is like it it's heel it's heel like there's no way you can not say what he did was heel like the match was over he attacked both people brutalized them and said to the person that just won a championship you don't deserve this i deserve this picked up the championship like this is what i came back for that's heel like and if a crowd was literally there, they would have booed him. I hope, and I really do hope, and this is a, a wish that I'm sure WWE will not grant, but I want everybody that's watching this video that subscribe to me, we need to close our hands, close our eyes, bow down, and, and pray to the wrestling gods that be. Please, please, for everything that is great about wrestling, please make Roman Reigns a heel. Just do it. Just one time. Just have him be a, a person that doesn't care about anything or anybody. All he cares about is hurting people and winning championships. Just make him, just give him an ounce of heel-like stuff. Like what he did tonight, just expound on that please please i hope you guys did the same thing because that's something i'm down for i'm not down for the corny roman that's the roman i like the roman that's like i don't care i don't care you guys had a match i want this title this is my championship you guys are in my yard talk your the aggressive asshole don't give a damn roman that's what i like even the shirt says something about beating up people and then leaving that's it that's his job shirt even looks bad as i'm like please wwe don't mess this up don't make him crack corny jokes no just have him be an aggressive asshole with heel like tendencies i'm all for it so comment down below if you guys are excited that roman reigns is back do you guys think roman reigns should be a heel or face i would love to get your guys opinion on this me personally just turn them heel man turn them heel turn them into a guy that just wants to hurt people and in people's careers and i'm all for it and taking championships not legit in in people's careers but just putting people in the hospital man like just have them be a badass a legit badass not no corny joke making badass but i would love your guys opinion appreciate all the love and support road to 30k it's always nice to say appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace